Hello, this is a road, but it's a special road that you and I can't use, unless that is we're using a particular method of transport, the bus. I'm in Runcorn again, and today we're looking at the future of public transportation and the world's first bus rapid transit system, if there is such a thing, and it's known as the Runcorn Busway, built with the goal of getting at least 50% of the town's population onto public transport. But spoiler alert, it didn't really work out how they had in mind. But what is a busway and why does Runcorn have one? The Runcorn Busway is a network of what appear to be ordinary roads. However, they're restricted and can only be used by local buses. Research had shown that journey times could be halved when using a busway rather than buses driving on the normal roads, and that's no bad thing. It also keeps the buses off the main roads, making more space for cars and other vehicles. It's a win-win. As for why Runcorn has this unique busway system, it was a case of being in the right place at the right time. Runcorn is a new town. What this means is that it was selected by the government to be expanded from a small village into a huge town. And because it was the 1960s, every idea and plan was ambitious to say the least, with the end goal to increase Runcorn's population to 90,000. And of course, if you're doing that, you need some good transport systems to handle all of those people. A vast road network would be installed, and it was, mostly, but what to do about public transportation? Runcorn was effectively a blank canvas where they could do anything they liked, and the answer was obvious. Monorail! Monorail! What's it called? Monorail! I did say plans were ambitious. Yeah, initially it was thought that a monorail could provide all of Runcorn's public transportational needs, and it was quite seriously considered, but ultimately they decided against it. Not because it wasn't a good idea, but because they calculated that you'd need several thousand passengers using it every day to make it financially viable. Sure, they had high hopes for Runcorn, but not that high, so instead they opted for a cheaper and shitter system. The busway, a network of roads separate from the other roads, allowing buses to get around quickly, cheaply and easily. Happy days. Sure, it's no monorail, but if it got people out of their cars and onto public transport, it'll do. I don't think you're meant to be driving down here, buddy old pal. Oh, fucking hell, he's coming back. The design and layout of the busway was actually quite well thought out. It would connect the residential areas to the town centre, schools, shops and industrial areas exactly as you'd like, and the intention was that no one would live more than 450 metres from a bus stop on the busway, which for the most part was achievable because the town was pretty much built from scratch on open land. It's easy to lay things out correctly when you haven't got existing infrastructure or buildings to deal with. Like most infrastructure projects, it was built in stages, with the busway's first section opening in 1971, running for about seven miles. It wouldn't be until 1977 that the rest of it was finished, taking the busway length to about 12 miles, which would make its way around the town in a rough figure eight sort of shape. The roads on which the buses drive, whilst quite small, are designed with a 40 mile per hour top speed in mind. The intention was that other vehicles, cycles and pedestrians would not be permitted to use the busway in any capacity, so having buses speeding along at 40 miles per hour wasn't really a concern. Although it would seem that in recent times, more and more footpaths and access points are appearing alongside the busway, which wasn't the original design intention, but I'm sure the council know what they're doing. The most interesting feature of the busway is found at its central point, if you will, at Runcorn Shopping City, a woeful building that takes us back to those exciting 1960s new town days. Here, there are two elevated sections of busway featuring the most concrete of concrete support piers and deck. There are also two bus stops that are perhaps a bit more like railway stations with the way that they operate. Access is via the shopping centre buildings and you walk out onto a platform to board or wait for your bus. To be honest, that's the most or only interesting piece of infrastructure on the network. The rest of it is mostly single carriageway roads with the odd bridge here and there, some of which have a slight design flaw in as much as they're too low and don't allow for larger or double-decker buses to use the network. At the time of conception, it was assumed that the same sort of bus would be used forever, but in hindsight, this may have prevented the busway from expanding with larger buses. Speaking of buses, today the network is served by Arriva, who have a depot located on Beechwood Avenue. This depot opened in 1975 and was operated by Crossville, a bus company formed in 1906 in Chester, and they ran buses all over the northwest of England. They already had a few depots in Runcorn, having operated bus services in the town since 1919, but with this newfangled busway being a thing, a more suitable depot was required, which led to the construction of the Beechwood Avenue depot, and the other depots were all closed down, and as we've seen, they're still using the same depot today, although now run by Arriva. Just a quick side quest whilst we're in the area, just up from the 
the depot is a bridge that carries the busway over a railway, but alongside is another bridge that's looking rather abandoned, and indeed it is. I'm not sure when it was built, but it features on the oldest maps that I can find, so it's most likely a relic of Victorian railways. It was only ever a footbridge, and I imagine its closure is down to the busway being built next door and the footpath rerouted as a result. Another not really abandoned, but we'll say it is bridge, can be found at the northeast corner of the busway. This bridge was built to be used as part of the busway along with these bits of road, and it was, but today it sits here being used only by dog walkers and fly tippers. In fact, each end of this section has been blocked off, so there's no buses coming down there anytime soon. Most likely because the busway was a borderline failure, and these days it's very different from the original idea. Things did not work out the way they thought. But why did it go wrong? Many reasons. The main one is that the government and its departments just don't know what the real world is like. They built Runcorn and its transport systems on the assumption that everyone would live, shop and work within the town. We could call it a 15-minute city, perhaps. But it doesn't work like that, and Runcorn proved it, with many people commuting out of town or using other transport services. Another the assumption they made was that by the 1990s, 90,000 people would live in Runcorn, but as of 2025, it's around 62,000, far less than they thought. And over the years, this has been a bit of a problem for the busway because far fewer people were using it, meaning it was nowhere near as financially viable as they first thought. But then their initial figures were all based on pipe dreams, so no wonder. Thank fuck they didn't build a monorail. Furthermore, the busway lacked investment and maintenance after only a few years of use. It was looking a bit run down, not helped by the bus operators themselves investing very little, so their buses were crap, so much so that some operators would end up closing down completely. The lack of support from councils, government and bus operators meant that what was supposed to be a futuristic and speedy way to travel around Runcorn turned into shit rather quickly, with less and less users as the years went on, meaning less revenue to invest, rinse and repeat. The result is a drop from over 20 to a handful of bus routes operating on the busway, and even then the busway has been scaled back. That abandoned or closed off section is the result of route cancellations. They simply stopped sending buses that way, and other parts of the busway were opened up to regular traffic because, well, you might as well at this point. A good example of that is Rock Savage Way, now a normal road, but once part of the busway closed off to regular traffic. So the world's first bus rapid transit system turned out to be a bit of a flop. How embarrassing for the government departments, whose sole goal was to get 50% of journeys to be made on public transport. Sorry, you failed. But I'm sure lessons will be learned and they won't frivolously throw away money on other projects like this. Oh, High Active Travel England, the government department with the sole goal of getting 50% of journeys to be made by public transport by 2030, no matter what the cost. Yep, they're still at it over 50 years later, albeit with a fancy rebrand, and they still think that everyone will live, work and shop within the same town. You can't help stupid. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked the video. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.